Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is the Rebel Starbuck, and it's my express pleasure as the CEO of Slam Wrestling Finland to have the seven-time world champion from England, the legendary Marty Jones with me. And today we're going to be speaking about Marty's extensive career and his experiences in the world of professional wrestling, uh, especially from the vantage point of a vocation as a career and what it requires, the things that you must know if you are interested in getting into pro wrestling, and also things to watch out for in addition to a few fun stories, I'm sure. So without any further ado, Marty, I'm so happy that you're in Finland. How have you enjoyed your trip so far? It's been very good and you've made me welcome and it's a country that I've not been to before. Mm -hmm. And as you know, when you're a top pro wrestler, that's one thing about our business. You get the opportunities to show your skills around the world. And uh, I must admit, Finland wasn't anywhere that was on my radar, mm -hmm. only because I think in my earlier days, there wasn't any uh, recognition of Finnish wrestlers, apart from yourself mm -hmm. and a few others. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why I'm here, to try and express that no matter where it is, third world countries, the big American states or England or wherever, mm -hmm. I think wrestling is a well-known sport and I class it as a sport mm -hmm. that is known worldwide. Yeah. And it'll be great to get the kids off the streets and the kids trying the game. And obviously there's Olympic wrestling and there's amateur wrestling and uh, Jiu Jitsu, MMA. And you get all that from the TV exposure. Mm, that's right. Yeah. And um, it'd be great if we could get some talent in Finland that the big major companies could take and invest in and possibly get the cameras over to Finland and, and start filming you know and, and get a big product and that's what it's all about a product is to to get the people to come and buy tickets and support their own local wrestler mm -hmm. and give the opportunity to some Finnish wrestlers that uh, I'm sure are good enough with people like yourself and mm -hmm. your expertise teaching them mm -hmm. we get a lot of promoters that try or they've never been in the ring themselves mm -hmm. but all they've got to do and what I urge them to do is always look at the head trainers um, acknowledgements what he's done around the world and where he's been and what he's done mm -hmm. like you're doing in any other profession yeah, and right. wrestling's the same mm -hmm. so you go to a gym that's got a credibility mm -hmm. and they make you welcome and you never know we could make somebody a, a future WWE superstar or AEW superstar Japanese superstar mm -hmm. but you've got to learn from the grassroots mm -hmm. and the grassroots what I've seen here with the two days I've been here, we've got one more day to go. Mm -hmm. I think that, and I'm not saying it because I'm on camera, but I do believe what I've seen, there's some great potential here in Finland and I can only see it going one way and that's up. Well, you come from a day and age where in your time, especially the 70s and perhaps even more so the 80s mm -hmm. in the UK, it was a, a golden era for pro wrestling because of the world of sport and because of the fact that you had ITV yep. uh, broadcasting. You had, was it 15 million people every single broadcast? Every Saturday, it, it used to be around about 13 to 15 million viewers we used to have. Yeah, that's crazy. And there was things like the FA Cup final mm. was always three o'clock on a Saturday. Mm. And on this particular Saturday, they moved the wrestling from four o'clock mm. to before the kickoff. Mm -hmm. And we drew more people watching the wrestling mm. than we did with the FA Cup final. And also royalty used to come and watch wrestling at the Royal Albert Hall. Wow, that's... The Queen Mother, yeah, yeah. she liked wrestling. And uh, the biggest thing is, and the big change that I've seen, mm -hmm. and I think it's just the economics of the world at the moment, when you have wrestling, I presume, hopefully, in Slam Wrestling can put some shows on in Finland, and there may be one every three months or every mm -hmm. two months, mm -hmm. and it gets popular every one month. Mm -hmm. But we used to run every week. Yeah. 
the same town hall, the same sports hall. Mm -hmm. Maybe once a fortnight was the average. Mm -hmm. If you said a certain town like Oldham, where I live, they used to have wrestling on a Thursday at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. And ladies and gentlemen, the next wrestling here will be in two weeks' time. Mm. So it was a continue, it was like a TV program. But do you think that it's possible to do this? Like, let's say in your, in England, how many millions of people do you have the population base? 60 million. 60 million. In Finland, we have six, six million people. Yeah. So I think with the population base, the difference is being what they are. Uh, you're able to do those gigs in all those different towns in the UK because you have such a, a wide variety of different cities, larger cities, plus you have the people. You have so many people within just one city, even if it's not London, you, even in Manchester alone, I'm sure. Um, but whereas here in Finland, there's only a certain amount of credible cities that you could run on a regular basis, plus with the way that the world is nowadays with all the social media, uh, you know, the bars, yeah, the yeah. pubs, in Helsinki alone on a weekend. You have so many shows, even during the week, but just on a weekend alone, you have so many shows that everybody's competing for the same entertainment dollar. Yeah. And I'm not sure if we can do exactly the same because of that, that what you did in well, England. I agree with you entirely, but the question was, how many people used to watch the TV? Exactly. Yeah. Not how many people went and bought a ticket. Mm. Because it's nice to watch it in your own front room. Mm. Mm. But what I'm saying is we was very fortunate to have TV mm. because that was our shop window. Right. Now it's a well-known thing that me and uh, I was in that era where there was a lot of needle between some guys trying to shoot for top spot, mm -hmm. like in every sport. Mm -hmm. But me and Rocco, me and Finley and people like that, we'd have a match on TV where the people actually believed it and then they read the newspaper and they thought, hey, remember that match that we saw? Mm -hmm. It's on down the road, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to do it, promote the event. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you entirely, if the people are not there, and, and like you say, in this day and age, money's a hard thing to come by. Oh yeah. You know, and are they going to want to go? Did they get value for money? Are they go I remember one time you, you couldn't get in to go to the cinema. Mm -hmm. You know, to go to the cinema, cinema with the, your, your mother and father and get some popcorn and ice cream, that was like a, a monthly event or an annual event. It was mm -hmm. a highlight for a kid. Mm -hmm. Now, you just go on your phone or you play it on a, a laptop or you do this, everything has changed. And I agree with you entirely. But when Bomber Pat Roach from Alvin Zane Pet and from all the, the movie stars, he was an accomplished, accomplished wrestler. He was in all the Temple Doom and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark films. Mm -hmm. He went on that television and said, ladies and gentlemen, we will not be coming into your living rooms anymore at four o'clock. Mm. It's a sad day for everybody mm. because somebody came in the world of sport, uh, ITV, mm -hmm. world of sport, and he thought that wrestling was a big joke. Mm. He thought, let's put golf on instead. Oh, jeez. So they put golf on, which is great for the people that like golf, mm. and I like any sport, and I don't mind in golf if they tie, if they tie in at the end on the last hole, mm. but I find it so boring. Yeah, what right. year was this that they actually made the decision to cut uh, the wrestling? I'm not quite sure you caught me out. I, I do remember, but um, let's say 30 it, years ago. Right. And was there a noticeable decline in the wrestling popularity after that? For, 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 the, for the disabled, mm -hmm. for the people that had no money, mm -hmm. for this, that and the other, yes. But we also found mm -hmm. that the town shows that were already established mm -hmm. were getting better. Oh, really? Because people loved the wrestling. Mm -hmm. And they, they class wrestling at that time as well, it was only like, I don't know, five euros, three euros to get in. Mm. Where your football matches were 20 euros, 25 mm. matches. Mm. So the thing is, it was a cheap form of entertainment. Blue collar. Yeah. Mm. And it catered for working class people. Exactly. Yeah. And it catered for the girls and the women to get together. Mm -hmm. Instead of going playing bingo, come on, let's go and have a few beers and go and watch the wrestling. Yeah. And the guys used to go to the pub and watch the football. Mm -hmm. But it was a family sport. The children started coming, you know. I know many a wrestler that were fantastic wrestlers, 
but he just didn't have that charisma mm -hmm. so the promoter put a mask on him and as soon as he got the mask on he was a superhero because <laughs> You know, and they had this complex. Was it my face? Was I ugly? Mm. You no, know, it was just the way that people w were viewed. You know, they wanted people to shout for and to mm. boo for. But the, the, the perspective of our business worldwide mm. is to entertain them, yes. And that's why I don't mind the phase sporting entertainment mm -hmm. that came in with the Americans. Yeah. I've got my own views on it in them mm -hmm. days and I had my own views on wrestling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a well-known fact that I started wrestling when I was six years of age due to an accident that I had at school and I had, um, well, I'm blind in one eye mm -hmm. and I had to patch over the eye and the kids used to call me Milky Bar Kid or Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion and, mm -hmm. and the thing is I didn't like how my parents um, would taught me the right way. I mean, there's one thing about my schooling days, I had a, a certificate every year for perfect attendance, mm. even though I hated school, mm. but I wasn't allowed to have a day off, throw a sickie mm. or whatever. Yeah. But I liked all the sports and school for me is just get sent out of the class so I could watch the sports. I was sport mad mm -hmm. and I can still watch sport and this, that and the other. But my dad took me to a little gym they did some boxing and wrestling mm -hmm. and I was fortunate that my father knew outside of wrestling a guy called um, Billy Robinson mm. and his mother who um, was a hairdresser mm -hmm. and so was my mother a hairdresser mm -hmm. and so did Billy Robinson have a lazy eye oh, really? and so did mm. I yes mm. Billy Robinson was blind in one eye really Somebody thought, the story goes, somebody was like about and threw a, a playing card at him and caught him in the eye. Oh, and if you look at his eyes, and everybody kept saying, this is a young Billy Robinson. Mm. But the thing is, I learned the business the correct way. Yeah. And I came in and did the amateur Olympic wrestling mm. first. And there's one thing that a lot of people don't know this. Now, this is a first to slam wrestling and yourself. Mm -hmm. If you mention professional wrestling mm -hmm. to Billy Robinson, mm. one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, mm -hmm. he would ask you to leave. Really? He t all these people said that Billy Robinson taught me professional wrestling. Mm. I'll put it on camera now. Mm -hmm. He taught nobody professional wrestling mm -hmm. because he defended professional wrestling that much. Mm. He didn't want it to know that some guys work together. Mm. He wanted everybody to, when he did them suplexes on them big Japanese guys, mm -hmm. it was for real. Mm -hmm. And that's what carried him through, mm -hmm. right? And the, the, the fact of the matter is he taught me amateur wrestling, Olympic wrestling. Right. And then when Billy went on his tours and he found out that I was turning professional because it happened to the same time that he decided he got, you know, a world tour to America mm -hmm. and even went to uh, Arizona and lived there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he set up house here in America, but he'd gone basically. Mm -hmm. And I was sick and tired of getting little medals mm -hmm. and I wanted to be two things mm. and this is only me personally mm -hmm. i thought professional wrestling if he was a british champion at amateur wrestling mm. i would make it easy mm. in this profession right because my mental state was right mm. instead of i'd show out to the crowd a little bit yeah because it's a sporting entertainment mm -hmm. because it's a fact that it's known worldwide that they're trying to ban the oldest sport in the world. Mm. The gladiators did it, Greek Romans did it. Mm -hmm. They want to ban wrestling from the Olympics. And the reason being, it's boring. Mm. And if I tell you a little tale, and I hope I'm true, and I don't want to make a, a fool of myself, mm -hmm. they're going to replace. So I've been told, but I only believe what I see, not what I hear. But I've been told that they're replacing Olympic wrestling Mm -hmm. With, you ready? Break dancing. <laughs> <laughs> now this is on camera that the great Starbrook have made him laugh, and I'll make him eat his words because that I was told, <laughs> and you know what? You know what my re my reaction was, <laughs> the same as his. <laughs> And if you say that to a lot of people outside there, in this day and age, oh yeah, that'll be good. 
break dancing. Now, come on, it is a skill. Yeah. Mm. Is it a sport? <laughs> I don't think so. so. But they're taking the greatest sport that all your rugby players, all your mm. MMA, your top 12 MMA fighters are all catch wrestlers. Yeah. They know how to wrestle. Yeah. And it's the only sport in the world. And the only people that turn up at the Olympics and all these events are the mother and father and gym mates. Right. In other words, they haven't followed the leaf of the professional wrestling game. Mm -hmm. But going back to what you said about the wrestling that was on like, in, in the front rooms, we was very lucky because it was our shop window advertisement. Mm -hmm. And England's always done okay. And then we've struggled a little bit down to recessions and at the present time due to the uh, pandemic with all this COVID that's going on, you can't go to public places. And I feel it may be a little while before the game picks up again. Yeah. I got a question. Um, I was living in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, yeah. where you've been also, you wrestled for yeah. Stu Hart there. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was trained at the Hart Brothers camp by Lance Storm. Yeah. And during that time that I was in Calgary from 1992 to 1994, uh, I got to know several of the old, of the old blokes there, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. One of them was the former NWA junior world junior heavyweight champion, Les Thornton, Very one good. of your countrymen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Les told me at the time, now you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you said that Billy Robinson didn't want anybody to know that he trained people for the pro game. Mm -hmm. I remember Les Thornton telling me that Billy Robinson uh, got a bad rap amongst many promoters. He was blackballed from many places because they were afraid of him because it was the shooting, because he was a shooter. Uh, and and he basically ended up quite a bit in Japan because of that. Yeah. Now, is this true? I would say yeah, because what Billy Robinson did, if the promoter didn't promote, what I mean by that, make a good match, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if there was somebody in the business mm -hmm. that wanted bad mouth the business, mm -hmm. and two had taken a liberty with somebody else, mm -hmm. or three. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have been in the business, mm -hmm. never trained, or did this and the other. Billy used to take a bit of a liberty with them. All right, all right. So some people said it was a good thing, mm -hmm. and some people said it was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the thing is, Billy Robinson looked after Billy Robinson, mm -hmm. and before he looked after Billy Robinson, he looked after the game, mm -hmm. the sport of professional wrestling. Now, you mentioned earlier that the thing that Billy Robinson really instilled in you was the foundation and the basics, the amateur wrestling yeah. and things like that. Now, when I was trained for pro wrestling, I had two coaches. One of them was Lance Storm. The other Very one good. was Carl Moffat, who used to wrestle as Jason the Terrible for Stu Hart. Right. Now, out of these, both of these guys, I remember that once Lance said this, that even to have a, a chance at making it in the world of pro wrestling, you need three things. You need the look the visage, yeah, yeah. the face, the body, the whole kit and caboodle externally. Then you need the charisma, because without charisma to make people either love you or hate you, it's the worst thing they can say, well, he's okay. And number three, you need the skills. Now, would you agree that in today's market, now times have changed, but in today's very highly competitive market still, with WWE being the top of the ladder, now in the UK you have NXT UK, so yeah. they've already branched out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a feeder system for America. Um, what would you say now, after all these years, having seen the different decades of pro wrestling and the standard that is required today, yeah. what are the things, the absolute musts as a talent that you must possess in order to even have a chance? That's a difficult question because there's so many aspects of our business to be a superstar or whatever. Mm. But the main thing is, is a passion to succeed as a pro wrestler, not just, let's say, a gimmick man, even though some gimmick men do succeed. Mm. But you've got to have a good foundation. You've got to know what the business is all about. Mm. And you've also got to respect the canvas and the people that run the business. and. Basically, you've got to know how to wrestle as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, all, it's, it's difficult to get into somebody's mind these days because I can say things, and what you said was 120% correct, and then somebody will disagree with you. Mm. And 
you're diverse a little bit. If somebody's outside there, and let's say is an Andre the Giant, mm -hmm. who's totally different. I use this word a lot now when I'm coaching. Mm -hmm. Try and be different from the normal. Mm -hmm. So you stand out in a crowd, mm -hmm. which Andre the Giant did, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was difficult for the guy. And if you knew the guy personally, it was difficult for him to walk. It was difficult for him to go to the toilet and this and the other. But it still was the, along with say, Hulk Hogan and people of that era, mm -hmm. they were the biggest draws. Mm -hmm. And I look at people that come through that door now and I go, there's no chance. Yeah. yeah. And I've not even, and the reason being, they don't even look the part, they don't look like an athlete. Mm -hmm. But that's my mind going back to when I started mm -hmm. and you had to look. Nowadays, it's people and kids as skinny as that. Mm -hmm. Some of the women in the audience are built bigger than what the wrestlers are <laughs> and they can do a better job than them. Yeah. But you've got to entertain, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We're moving with the times, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm not saying it because you're here now. I know I do my own work when I get asked to go for it to do a seminar. Mm -hmm. You know, I get embarrassed because when people say to me, oh, wrestling, this cliche, it's all rehearsed, it's all fixed. Mm. Well, I can prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Get on a plane, go to Japan, they meet you in Japan, you go to the arena, and that night you're wrestling with somebody who you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. You've never, ever, you know, you've never met them before. And in Japan, you're not allowed to meet your opponent. Mm -hmm. They're changing different changing rooms. Now, people don't understand this. Mm -hmm. And there's things where, okay, a promoter or a so-called promoter can walk into, let's say, slam wrestling here. Mm -hmm. Right, I've got a, an arena and I've got the rent mm -hmm. sorted. I, and that guy is on with that guy. That was a good match, we'll have you. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably say, in, in, in my day, a lot of people used to get the needle when he said, now listen, let him win because all the ladies like him. And he's never done any wrestling in his life and you could screw him into the ground. Yeah. And if you screwed him into the ground, you had no work, so you had to play ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no matter what profession it is, you've got to know the basics and the background. And I like it when, especially at my age now, mm -hmm. oh, this is such and such a body's son. Oh, this kid's just come out of the amateurs. And all the top amateur wrestlers do not make it in this profession. Oh, no, not at all. You know, because, no. you know, and I might be wrong in saying this, but unfortunately, I watched the great fights, boxing, Rocky Marciano and people like that, Muhammad Ali, entertaining. They all copied the wrestlers, mm -hmm. you know, because they got entertained and that's mm. the, I don't mind the sports and entertainment world mm -hmm. but you've got to be fit you've got to be dedicated that's another mm -hmm. good word for the game mm -hmm. and you've got to respect the business and the people you're on with mm -hmm. but I'm a firm believer if you're not ready to wrestle mm -hmm. people don't get hurt I'm telling you people do get hurt mm -hmm. and then on the other side of the coin if you're a popular wrestler you can wrestle sometimes five ten times a week Mm -hmm. And if you get the contracts to go to, say, Germany, mm -hmm. there'll be a Finnish wrestler there, like yourself, mm -hmm. and he'll say, hey, you could go well in Finland. So you go to Finland and from Finland to Japan. And you never, ever possibly go home for a couple of years in the old days. Mm -hmm. You was lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And But the territory, right, do you want to go to America? Nah. I'm not going to America. It's all bullshit and feathers and all this. So big likes, big city. Yeah. But they did something right. Mm -hmm. But I'm pleased to say it's like fashion. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. When the sun comes out now, all the mini skirts and the boob tops are out again. No, oh, thank right. God. Thank God. Right. But what I'm saying, wrestling's the same. Mm -hmm. it's, it's taking a complete turn. Mm -hmm. Right? I watch it. I even watch it myself. And sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with this, so don't be writing all the letters to me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the girls sometimes are better wrestlers than the guys. Mm -hmm. Because they depict two people having a fight. Mm -hmm. And after all these years, mm -hmm. professional wrestling is depicting two people competing in a competition.
This is this I agree with because the thing is that what I always tell the guys when I train people uh, is is that nobody wants to come and pay money to see a fake fight. No. Nobody wants to come and see something which is just shits and giggles or just gaga. You, you may as well go to a movie, to a comedy movie. You may as well go to see the circus if you want yeah. to see the circus. But the thing is that when you come to see two people face off inside of a ring, yeah. you're expecting because of the setting itself that you're going to see a fight. And what do you think is missing today in today's independent or even the worldwide scene? Because even WWE has changed dramatically. Yeah. Uh-huh. AEW, a very different ball game. They promised us a certain kind of presentation. I, I don't think they've lived up to it. They said sports-based. I don't, I don't quite see very much of it. But my question is that what do you think is missing today that if you, they want to bring the, the game back up, if you, if you want to bring wrestling back up to relevance and to prominence and to make some money with it, to have a chance for the talent to tour the world, mm. to do this thing, to have a chance that people will want to pay money the ticket to come to see the event. What's missing and what needs to be fixed today? I don't think there's a real lot missing at the moment, but give it a little bit more time. I think we're in that transition period mm. where if I can tell, this is very difficult to answer without offending people, but I've done it in the past, so I'll do it again. No, of course. Right? As far as American wrestling is concerned, mm. they are on, in England for arguing sake, mm. they've now gone into BT Sports, they've gone into this, they've got that, they've got four, their own channel, they've got this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. And then it, it baffles me, uh, the WWE will be coming to Manchester mm. and the tickets are so expensive, but as soon as you go on sale, it sold out within hours. And I'm thinking, how did they do that? <laughs> and they haven't mentioned that he is on with him yeah. or she is on with her. Yeah. All they know is that them stars that they see on television, right? Not even the top headliners like The Rock mm -hmm. and Hulk Hogan mm -hmm. and all them. Mm -hmm. I'll diverge a little bit. There used to be, oh, it's still there, Victoria Station used to have a big dome Mm -hmm. and the trail the railway station mm -hmm. in Manchester mm -hmm. 25 years ago and Hulk Hogan was there and a few of the American wrestlers mm -hmm. but they had to have at late notice some English wrestlers on the bill mm -hmm. he couldn't be all American okay. it was due to tax reasons okay. you, you've got to give an opportunity to the British people uh, wrestlers mm -hmm. to they can't just come and perform and take the money mm -hmm. okay. you had to give the opportunity and I was one of the guys mm -hmm. and I was actually on Tony Sinclair great wrestler mm -hmm. myself and a few others and was in a six-man tag with Hulk Hogan and the crowd was so disappointed that Hulk Hogan was in a tag mm -hmm. do you want him to see a one-on-one -on -one? Mm -hmm. but them children neither the life out of the families and the mothers and the fathers mm. i want to go and see the rock i want to go and see uh, becky lynch i want to go and see these superstars these superheroes mm -hmm. that they see in the front room mm -hmm. and every mother and father wants the best for the kids mm -hmm. so they start saving up mm -hmm. and the good thing is they go to it and yes they never stop talking about it, the kids mm -hmm. But wrestling is coming a hundred yards from my house next week. Mm. And there's a guy called Marty Jones, he's on the, who? Who's he? Mm. Because the young, younger ones now, with not having any television, don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. It's only the diehards that watch. Mm. On, 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 on. And another thing, we do know social media has also killed our business as well. Oh, you yeah. can subscribe to see it and you can watch this. Yeah. But it's, if the, all the, all the, the celebrities that are on TV are coming within reach. I would like, obviously, to see British wrestling back on the TV. But I ask myself, is there enough talent in mm. Britain to fulfil a weekly, monthly spot? But the good thing that's happened, NXT experimented with William Regal. Mm. He lives in Blackpool mm -hmm. and William Regal is, let's say, the general manager of it all now. Mm -hmm. And he... Um, 
he'll be the first to admit when wrestling was on TV in England he didn't have many TV matches mm. but he had got his sight set on going to America mm. he could see where the the game was going mm. and it's a true if Regal was with us now Regal's the one that makes the matches he's the one like tells the people I'm going to put A on with B and it's going to be an interesting match and he had a word with the people at B I would like to take a tournament let's say into Blackpool mm. well Blackpool in England is the Las Vegas of Great Britain Mm. holiday seaside place we've got the famous tower mm -hmm. we've got the fun fair we've got this everybody goes mm -hmm. to blackpool mm -hmm. we have the illuminate world famous hallucinations and we have illuminations and we've got artists that's on there it's the capital of the entertainment mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. and we have a, a hall there and um he wanted to take the product into there and it was a huge huge success but he came to this country and he handpicked some wrestlers and it became NXT UK. Mm -hmm. And what he wanted to do is try and replace the flamboyancy mm -hmm. and the, the gimmick wrestlers, mm -hmm. which you'll always need. Yeah. And the, what there was missing in the old days and bring it back. And what they are doing at this time as we speak, mm. this week, mm -hmm. If you watch NXT UK, you will see the w old World of Sport days type of wrestling mm -hmm. where they're getting stuck in and the people are believing that they are really hurting each other and people are getting hurt and they're making it a le legitimate sport again with a little bit of it. And there's some great talent on there, mm -hmm. some really good talent. Then all of a sudden you'll go over to Raw and SmackDown, which is the American what we used to mm -hmm. and I honestly I might be wrong mm -hmm. they're losing the ratings badly oh they're they're terrible right now right because the American public mm -hmm. and now let's be honest and this is no offense to any Americans mm -hmm. they do everything big yeah they've got Disneyland they've got this mm -hmm. and they like a bit of the bullshit and they like mm -hmm. this and they're the best in the world <laughs> and yeah. what they do is best in the world mm -hmm. but now the people are getting a bit smart mm -hmm. and saying nah this wrestling like now all right they still sell out at wrestlemania mm. they still sell out but there's more people coming from abroad that love wrestling to wrestlemania mm -hmm. because wow we're going to wrestlemania it's yeah. a big event to go to yeah. so every question you ask me there's always a but mm. but but i can honestly believe with people like yourself and some of this talent that's I'm sorry you're not going to make it rather than give me your money you can train you can train you can train mm, yeah. oh, and, and, the, and the old heads in the business still love and they've got the passion for it but if somebody comes to a gym who thinks it's a joke get rid of them yeah. or use them by showing them mm -hmm. have we got the people to, in the business to show them because there's a new era coming through they might not have been taught themselves how to show some people. I think, I think that nowadays there are so few talents out there that, that have been brought up the right way. Oh yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, because I've wrestled some of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell right away as soon as, you, as soon as you link up or as soon as you're in the ring with them that there's just, even when you talk to them a couple of words, they don't have a clue. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's also... Uh, it's just one of the it's like that question I always say oh, beer is a good thing when you're in a bar and you're drinking away and somebody says you know that is over there no no well that's Marty Jones seven times world champion what happened? darts snooker no wrestling <laughs> Marty have you got a minute yeah how are you you don't believe you're a wrestler. Oh, that's okay. What's your job? Oh, I work in an office. I said, I don't believe you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> it's always open for the debate. Yeah. But the thing is, I can back it up because social media. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube mm -hmm. and just put Marty Jones wrestling. Mm -hmm. Then they'll come to you. Can I buy you a drink? Do you want to know you all of some? Because you ask somebody. Yeah. And say, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to know. Yeah. But that's in life. Give people respect as well. Yeah. 
and people that think I want to be a wrestler I want to be like them give them the opportunity mm -hmm. now I try and run a few promote I haven't got the money that's mm -hmm. the truth of the matter mm -hmm. but I'd probably have to draft a few of my what I class wrestlers into the country mm -hmm. which cost money mm -hmm. hotels things like that mm -hmm. everything costs money absolutely and then you think to yourself how am I going to get some money if I'm going to put wrestling on in this town and if I get a hundred people in mm. uh, f you got to start low and work your way up or high and you're taking a gamble all the time all the time and then take it from me for you viewers out there the WWE no matter what it is they announce a date and it's sold out so whatever they're doing the product but I always ask myself if you had no television Mm. What would it be like in six, nine, twelve months' time? Mm -hmm. I think it'd fade away. Mm. So whoever's marketing these WWEs and doing well, they're doing a good job. But so are the guys. The only people that knock the wrestling at the moment is me. Mm. I knock it because I don't think that's wrestling. I, I'm not going to name them and shame them, but I see some big superstars that are on big mega money. Mm. And all they are is dancing down and getting the people clapping and unfortunately it was wrestling on tv recently mm. where they had no audiences yeah still is right to you're correct yeah. next thing is these guys are coming down the down the ramp and they're saying come on let's join let's clap let's get them going and i went to myself there's no audience there how stupid are you gonna you know i'm saying that on camera that's the first thing that came across to me yeah. Right. Now, if they looked down the camera and said, hey, you people at home, mm -hmm. this is for you. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. Sit back, enjoy it. And as he's saying something, somebody hits him from behind. Yeah. And take it from me, when they get hit nowadays, they get hit. Mm. You know, because it's the only way forward. And this is a tough, tough business. Get into the arena, mm -hmm. stay in there, handling the pressure, doing this. Yeah, it is a cutthroat business. Yes, there's a lot of jealousy in the business. Mm -hmm. but. Them that are jealous, nine times, I'm talking about people that, um, that may have been left some money with the family. What would you like? I'd like to be a wrestling promoter. Mm -hmm. And they've never put a pair of boots on in their life. Mm -hmm. But I'll guarantee you, he'll get wrestlers easier than what I'll get them for because he'll turn around and then it all comes about money. Mm -hmm. But worldwide, there's a bit of a recession on because of this thing. Mm -hmm. So that comes into it regarding money. Mm -hmm. So no, we won't go, but we can watch these superstars on the TV. Mm. I mean, I wanted to watch the other night, the NXT UK brand, mm -hmm. and I was going through all the channels, mm -hmm. couldn't get it. Really? Because I hadn't bought the BT mm. wrestling channel. Okay. And I ain't paying 30 odd pound a month. Mm. And I don't pay these subscription channels mm. without knowing what I'm going to get. Maybe you'd be better off just getting the network for that 10 year or was it 10? Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm. But why? Because I don't know who's on. Yeah. They don't advertise it, you say, oh, wrestling's on. Mm. It's like some people, the anticipation of a boxing match, mm. and they build it up that much, and this is going to be a big fight, and all of a sudden, one punch mm. in, in, in uh, 10 seconds, and yeah. the guy's out, yeah. they all go, how was the fight? A complete and utter waste of time and money. Yeah. Not the skill of the guy knocking him out in the first 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. But going back to your question, it's difficult to answer, but everybody who comes through that door nowadays mm -hmm. is welcome to have a try. Mm -hmm. And for all them people that have done these other sports that fancy this game, mm -hmm. give it a go. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, nine times out of 10 in the old days, in the old days, mm -hmm. or anybody with half a brain, you can't do this job no you come unstuck mm -hmm. but if you talk with somebody with some credibility mm -hmm. no mickey mouse promoter or trainer mm -hmm. i mean there's gyms now on every street corner mm -hmm. there's personal trainers on every street corner oh yeah dime a dozen but you try and do the stamina mm -hmm. for this job mm -hmm. do you think you can run the ropes i i'll guarantee you if I get 10 people off the street or 10 people from anywhere who's never been in a wrestling ring before, they'll make themselves look a fool by just trying to get into the ring because <laughs> they can't. Yeah, that's right. 
And I also believe a proper wrestler is born to do this job. Because mm -hmm. nobody holds a gun to your head and you think, what the hell am I doing this for? Yeah. You know, it's simple as that. Uh, I got a question as far as, because now we were talking about the Rocks, the Hulk Hogan's, yeah. people like this. One reason why, in my estimation right now, pro wrestling or sports entertainment is suffering uh, as far as the numbers are going down, as we said, Raw and SmackDown are falling, and there is a dwindling interest as far as if you compare the numbers from, let's say, 20 years ago, the Monday Night Wars, mm -hmm. to what they are now, it's, there's a, an incredible chasm in between. Um, We're not getting the characters in this. This is what I was going to ask you now, is that if you're thinking about the people that are on top today, or just the, the, the general crew that's on television today, where do you think the fault lies? Is it in the writers, so to speak? Because now we don't have bookers anymore on the big products. We just have writers. Mm -hmm. Is it in the writers? Is it the fact that they force feed the lines to the talent and they're just rehearsing lines that are, aren't their own? It's not their own speech, not their own mind? Uh, is it because that... It, what's the missing ingredient? Why aren't they coming across like Stone Cold Steve Austin? Why are they not as big of a star as Dwayne Johnson? Why are they not as popular as Hulk Hogan? What's missing today? Well, where's all the rock bands? Where are they too? You know, yeah. it's in society. Where's the great Ellies and Eusebios and footballers and things like that? You know, it's just life. It's taking that transformation in a full circle again. But I do think a lot of it's down to money. Money's all, all evil. I mean, the rock, Mm. Does he need wrestling? Not anymore. Does he still do it? No, I think. Well, he, yeah, he does the odd little. Maybe yeah, the yeah. odd appearance. Yeah. But like Stone Cold Steve Austin, mm. what he did, and he was a first at doing what he did. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker, mm. all these characters were built up, but they all looked apart. Mm. You know, we can get some people, and not knocking the. Uh, a lot of these guys weren't even on the indie shows before Regal spotted them. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had people say, oh, that Walter, the German guy. I know him. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, for the size of him mm -hmm. and what he does, mm -hmm. he's a good wrestler. He is. Right? Mm -hmm. And now his two German partners um, Axel Dieter's son. That's right. Yeah. And the other guy. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the, uh, the guy with the beard or are you talking about... Uh, all of them. All, all, of them. all yeah. the German guys. Mm -hmm. And for an Englishman to say the German guys are getting over very, very good. Mm -hmm. One, they look the part. Mm -hmm. And two, they're sticking him in. They're looking the part and they're delivering. Mm -hmm. Now, if the script writers are doing whatever they're doing with them, they're mm -hmm. doing okay. Mm. I do think personally, mm. there's some guys that haven't been given the chance mm. that could do well mm. in um, the product that they've got. Mm. And especially the women as well, mm -hmm. you know? But that's not for me to say, I can only recommend people. But don't forget these thousands of people that go for tryouts and maybe only one or two make it. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're doing, now they're doing quite good for NXT UK mm. only because maybe because it's U NXT UK I like the brand because it's depicting two people having a fight mm -hmm. now there is some people and it's not right for me to say mm -hmm. I don't think they should be on NXT UK mm -hmm. but whoever it is right they can see something in them mm -hmm. I also know that the product that I'm watching, I quite enjoy it, so that'll do for me. Mm. And there's no reputable schools, there, there is the schools, but it's the finance. If somebody gave us a, a, a big wad of money to teach these people rather than the students paying us mm. to try and teach, I mean the facilities that they've got, WWE and places like that. Mm. It, it, it's a day out just to, to walk into them rings. The one in America, there's seven rings there. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal places. Mm. And they've got the rules and you've got to stick by the rules. Mm. I mean, there's people 
all walks of life, you know, Mick Foley and people like that. Mm -hmm. He was a character, whether well, you think he was a wrestler or whatever. He, yeah. They all fitted into that era. Mm -hmm. But with all the troubles in the world, we've just gotten through a thing in, and you know, it's my own personal thing, which I'm, when you talk about Brexit every time you, you, you turn the TV on, mm. this stuff that's going on now at the moment, speaking out and black lives matter and all that, all lives matter to me. Mm. But at the end of the day, in this business, if there's a black guy there and a white guy there, mm. they don't bother, they just want entertaining, they've come out mm. and they want to forget all the troubles and they want the children to be happy and this, that and the other. But what do I think is missing? Mm. We're in that transformation, uh, transition period right now. Mm. Are we going to be great? Are we going to do okay and fail again? Do you think that we have the personalities today though? The, uh, the guys, is it really down to money when it comes down to getting over? What does it take for a talent to get over nowadays? Just be good at what you do. But what do they want? And that's a golden question. Mm. What do they want? Vince McMahon said, on the Steve Austin podcast yeah. some time ago, he said that when Steve Austin posed the question to him, where are the John Cena's now? Where's the rock? Where's the next Stone Cold? And Vince said, I don't think these millennials nowadays, they, I don't think they want the same things anymore. They're content with being where they are. They, they don't have the same drive, the same passion. Do you, do you think this is true or...? It's probably true, but at the end of the day, Vince McMahon, whether you like him alone, he's doing something right. All the rumors, they're losing money. Listen, I'm not bothered about that. I'm, I'm looking at something with my own eyes that I want to pay money for. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm in this business, I mean football. Mm. That's just, the biggest sport in, in England is soccer. Mm. Well, it's not actually, it's horse racing, but apart from that, you're not taking part in that, you're betting on this. Mm -hmm. But the biggest sport pastime is fishing. Mm. People think fishing's boring. Mm. I go every day fishing. Mm. Now it's hard to believe what I do. Because I sit there with the ducks and I'm there on my own, there's nobody minding me, and I can plan the week out, mm -hmm. especially if the weather's good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's only minutes from my house. Mm. If anybody wants to find Marty Jones, he's either at the gym or he's fishing, mm -hmm. or maybe down at the pub. The thing is, it's changing all the time. Everything's changing. Mm. I mean, I, I've, I've been honoured that you've asked me to come over to this country. Mm -hmm. It's been a nightmare to get here. Yeah. It's a nightmare to go back. I don't know whether I'm allowed to go back in my country at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to fill forms out. Do they expect that me, me, has got a computer? Mm -hmm. How can I go online? I don't know. I wasn't educated that way. Mm -hmm. And they're expecting everybody to be, have a computer in the back pocket and go online. Mm -hmm. It's the world's changing everything. I read the other day, somebody said, they're gonna charge 10 million bucks to be the first man on the moon. Mm. You can go to the moon if you want. Well, why am I going to the moon? Mm. There's no fishing ponds there, I don't think. I don't think there's any, you know, it's just beyond my thing. Mm. But going back, People want to see something and come away entertained. Mm -hmm. I, I love food, you can tell. Mm. If I have a big, big, if I have snack food and they have this and they have that, it's okay. But if I go out for a nice steak and this, that and the other, and I've got the money in the pocket, if I enjoy it and it fills me up, it doesn't matter how much it costs. The biggest problem is when it's very, very expensive and it's crap mm. and it's only a small portion, that's what disappoints me mm. and wrestling is the same let me ask you as a coach now you've trained for example Ridge Holland is your boy who just debuted yeah, yeah. in yeah. the the American part of the NXT product yeah and uh, you've I mean you trained William Regal and you've trained a lot of people in the wrestling business you've been to different countries to train people what do you hold to be the attributes the traits the things that you're looking for in somebody who walks in through the door that they are looking to get into the wrestling business, that they want to become part of what we do. What is it that you're looking for that you can tell right away whether or not this person has a chance to make it? Is he different? Does he look the part? Is he different from the normal guy on the street? Mm. And if he is the normal guy on the street, 
what he does in here is his showcase and he shows out mm. and he respects the people that are teaching him he respects new people mm. right and also he's got the passion to go forward not just oh i'm training i'll wait until somebody picks me up and if they fail mm. i've known some people go for tryouts mm. i've known people go and i think they're absolutely fantastic mm. but just because they've got that hello are you all right yeah and they don't mingle with the fans you've got to be the whole deal mm. i've been very very lucky now when you say yes or no i look at it I wasn't very clever at school. I was going to go, when the school teacher asked me what did I want to do, his name was Jones, funny enough, same as mine. <laughs> and I said, Mr. Jones, he said, no, this is a formal talk. Mm. You call your, your teacher sir, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Sir, I'd like you to know, listen, this is formal between me and you. Mm. Now, come on, Jonesy. And he was called Jones. Mm. I said, well, Mr. Jones, he said, no, call me Terry. So I said, is that your name? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Terry Jones. <laughs> I said, yeah. He says, what do you want to do when you leave school? Mm. I said, well, Jonesy, cocky. Mm. I want your job. I want to be a PE teacher. Mm. He says, right. I said, good choice. He said, but unfortunately, you'll never be a school teacher as long as you've got all in your ass. So I said, why? He said, there's 30 kids in your class. You come in 23rd and 25th mm. every year. Mm. You excel at sports and you don't do so bad at maths, mm. right? Mm. To be a PE teacher, mm. you've got to be good at geography, English, maths. You've got to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. You don't just do physical education. Right. Mm. My advice to you is, get out of school and go in the army hmm. and be a PT instructor mm -hmm. or be a policeman. Mm -hmm. Get some sort of a services job. Mm. Be right up your street. Mm -hmm. So I applied to be a policeman. Really? And my mother said, when you're gonna, at your age, when you get older, mm. I don't want you to be a policeman. Mm. I said, why? It'll be knives and guns. Oh, right. That's my own opinion. That mm. was like mm. all them years ago. Yeah. yeah. But I went for a job as a prison officer mm. and I got the job as a prison officer. Mm. And I phoned my mum up, I've got a proper job. Mm. He said I'd jump in my car and going over to Germany and coming back and going here, mm. right? To mm. please my family. A proper job with me mm. was doing what all my other colleagues, my schoolmates, never went to Mexico and mm -hmm. Japan and places, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a proper job yeah. in my mother's eyes. Yeah. And my mother and father worked to the bone for me and mm -hmm. my sister. Mm -hmm. And then all these people that I went to school with that's really educated, they hadn't been around the world. Mm -hmm. I'd been around the world twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I went for a proper job. Mm -hmm. When can you start? Monday? Great, go for your medical. Just go for your medical and you see you know and what you know, you can start here. Mm. Strange Ways Prison, one of the top prisons in Manchester mm. and in the, in the world, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went up the road, sat there, phoned my mum, I've got a job, mm. failed my medical. Oh, jeez. British champion, amateur wrestling, been all around the world, failed my medical. I said, you just telling me I'm no good? He said, no, you're blind in one eye. Mm. I said, so? He said, what happens if somebody attacks you from that side? I said, I'll fucking knock them out. Sorry for swearing, but that's what I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, how do you know? I said, it's a sixth sense. I know body language and this and the other. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Yeah, that's right. And you know when somebody walks through that door whether they're any good or not. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned Ridge Holland. His proper name's Luke Menzies. Mm -hmm. He walked, he rang me, and mm -hmm. then you can ask him, from Cancun. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a rib. Mm -hmm. I went, hello, what's your name? Who is it? He said, it's Luke Menzies. And I used to be a rugby coach, and Luke Menzies is a top rugby player mm. in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is my daughter playing a rib at first, because mm -hmm. my daughter's in Australia, mm -hmm. funny enough, played rugby. And all of a sudden, you can imagine the phone call, mm. and what can I do for you? Well, I've been told to contact you 
and you could probably put me in the right way to become a professional wrestler. Mm. I said, yeah, okay, when you, where are you? Meaning, what part of England are you from? He says, I'm in Cancun, Mexico. I said, well, that's one hell of a bus ride to get you in for next Wednesday. <laughs> he said, I'll be there. He's on my mind. Who's doing this joke, you know? Mm. Sure enough, we start training at seven. This guy walked, I was there early, cleaning up. He walked in straight away. Mm. And he looked apart. Mm -hmm. Luke Menzies. Mm -hmm. And then I went, okay, let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. And you've just got married? He said, yeah. I said, let me just tell you. I'll do my best for you, he said, but you won't be seeing your children or your wife <laughs> unless you take them with you. Yeah. And within six months, I took him down to see Regal. Mm -hmm. And I'm pleased to say Regal said, excuse me, can I just have a private word with Marty? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. And he went outside because Regal was doing his one morning show at the Frog and Bucket in Manchester. Oh, comedy. The, the comedy show, yeah. Yeah, it, well, he talks about it. And uh, Regal went, he looks apart. Can he do the business? I said, no. He said, he just started. Mm. He said, will you ring me and tell me, would you take the gamble on him? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. because you wanted people, you don't want superstars that can wrestle, unless they, they, they're poaching them from another promoter. Yeah, right, right. But they want, they've got the best coaches mm -hmm. at NXT, mm -hmm. all British. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not true, they're not all the best coaches. Mm -hmm. Like, we've got Steve Carino, we've got... Uh, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, Shawn, and we've got, uh, God, it reminds me, the big guy, Bloom. Oh, oh, Matt Bloom. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you've got all them guys, and you've got guest trainers. Mm -hmm. But the Brits that are all there, Johnny Moss, Brookside, and this, that, and, mm -hmm. and Mason, and Johnny Saint, and yeah. all them, mm -hmm. you know? And people say to me, well, you should be at the Performance Centre. Mm -hmm. And the answer to the question is, I would love to be at the Performance Centre. Mm -hmm. But let's face reality. My body has taken toll 60 years in the business, mm -hmm. and I've just had an operation on me on my knees mm -hmm. and I remember going to uh, when I went to Australia and he said uh, are you here for work mm. so I said uh, no mm. well it, on this ice of thing you're a wrestler so we think you'll be wrestling <laughs> and you'll be getting money mm -hmm. and you haven't declared this I said I won't be getting money as mm. such, they're paying for my airfare mm. and my hotels, which is my pay. Mm -hmm. And I've come to see my daughter in Australia, and they wouldn't believe seven times world champion wasn't going to come to wrestle. Mm. So I stood there in the office in front of everybody and dropped my pants. Mm. And then there's my stitches there, and there's my ankle there with a four inch plate on it. And he just went, Have a good trip, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to go to the performance centre, but I'm not looking the part. Mm -hmm. I, I could do if I got the, the chance. Mm -hmm. But going back to your initial question, what does it take? It takes all types. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like, but they've got to do their own work as well. Mm -hmm. I look at Pete Dunne, what's he got going for him? Mm -hmm. And to be honest, and no disrespect to, to Pete Dunne, mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of him before Regal had picked him out at some gym. Mm. He must have seen something in him, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, Pete Dunne, all he's done is watch a lot of the world of sports tapes. Jimmy Brakes, he used to do all bending down. Now, what he's doing is different. And I like that word. I use it a lot now in my training. Mm -hmm. Try and be different. Mm. Try and be different. But you know whether they've got it or not. At the moment, there's a lot of okay guys and girls mm. but they haven't just got that boom to they haven't got that something yeah, yeah. but you know i'm not saying it because you're here mm. i don't even want to know your age or anything like that mm. talking to you now and you've got the passion for it mm -hmm. and we're a breed on our own mm -hmm. we've got our own opinions about other people that maybe a bit of jealousy that have made it mm. as such and we think they're not good enough to lace your boots up. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you've got to live with it. Now, I always say, any wrestler that's been invited to go to Japan, 
where whether it's sumo wrestling, whatever, mm -hmm. martial arts, if they ask you to go to Japan, mm -hmm. you've got to be a good one. You have to be. Right? Yeah. And I was fortunate to have gone eight times. Mm -hmm. Right? And I was fortunate to go because I didn't think I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. But that's where my amateur background. And then I had one or two people say, well, you're only going because you was coached by Billy Robinson. Mm. I said, can I just stop you? I wasn't coached by Billy Robinson. I was taught the amateur wrestling by Billy Robinson. Mm -hmm. As I said at the start of this conversation, mm -hmm. Billy Robinson never talked about professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. There's certain wrestlers that say he was trained. There's certain women on NXT mm. that was trained by Billy Robinson. Yeah. I don't want to name them because I don't want to get into an argument. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you now, he wasn't trained with them. They went to a seminar mm -hmm. when Billy Robinson was in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They went to a seminar when he was in another state. But he was for catch wrestling. Mm -hmm. Not the pro job. Yeah, that's right. And the good thing about Billy Robinson, a lot of his wrestling, a lot of people hated Billy Robinson because he did the shoot wrestling in a style that he brought in. And I do a bit of that in my work. Mm -hmm. I like a throw to be a throw, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's coming back. But there's some questions, you haven't put me on the spot, but I know exactly where you're coming from, mm. and I can't answer it. And our business is like that. Mm. It's like, I say to some people sometimes, is there a Father Christmas? Mm. And they go, no. Mm. Okay, on mm. Christmas day, Christmas morning, mm. you come to my house, and you tell my three, four-year-old granddaughter, mm. there's no Father Christmas. It's make believe. Mm -hmm. You believe what you want to believe. Mm -hmm. And our job is for them people that think wrestling is a joke, they don't get hurt and they don't do it to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, when you take your kids to the cinema, I mean, I, used to, I never went to the cinema. I used to wait till the Chinese lady came mm -hmm. with all the pirate DD, DVDs and buy them <laughs> because it was cheaper. <laughs> and also, it's got to be value for money. Mm. Now I know if The Rock was on in Manchester, mm. right, and God forbid, because one of my friends, mm. his wife actually got murdered, that's what I'm going to say, murdered, mm. when that Ariana Grande concert was on and they had the blast mm -hmm. at the Manchester Arena, mm -hmm. they, had, they had to cancel the wrestling the next couple of days because of the security. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, no matter what it is, if it's a rock band or mm -hmm. wrestling, they're frightened of going to these public places now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all these things have got an impact. Money is a big factor mm -hmm. to the product they're going seeing. But for the little indie shows at the moment, it's very, very difficult because you can't go in groups due to the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hard to pick up. But as far as people having a go and talent, I just beg you and urge you, Give it a go, there's no harm in trying, but don't treat this business as a joke because you'll come unstuck. You know what I say is that you, you mentioned make believe a moment ago. Hmm? I believe this in my heart of hearts. I say to people that I'm in the make believe business. I make believers out of people. Yeah. It's the pride that you have in your job. Hmm? It's the pride when you step into the ring, you make believers out of those who are yeah. watching. They can have whatever notion any prejudice that they have of our business, any bias. But once they see your match, it's like Ole Anderson said mm -hmm. back in the day, he said, he said that if you see any bullshit in my match, I'll give you your money back. You can say anything you want about the other matches on the card tonight, you watch my match. If there's any bullshit, yeah. I give you your money back. I yeah. think Johnny Valentine was much the same. Yeah. But in closing, as we've uh, gone through a, a hell of an interview here with you, Marty, I'd like to throw out a couple of names back to back. You give me which one of them you believe is the top man and for just a short reason why. Is this my honest opinion? This is your honest opinion. So you're gonna give me two names or one or just say is he better than him or is he better? Yeah, so if you have to say one up, one down, you, you tell me which one of them you would rank uh, as far as being the superior man or for in whatever my reason. my personal view. In your personal view. Okay. All right, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. That's a tough one, and I'll tell you why. I've wrestled them both. 
and I'll put it on camera now, I owe the Hart family, all the Hart family, a lot of gratitude and what they did for me, giving me the opportunity. Brett was a hell of a superstar. He got to that shop window with the WWE. Mm. And Owen, I had a match with him, which is on YouTube. It's still one of the best ma technical matches to the day where we never spoke. Brett was one hell of a talent. All the hearts were. Mm. Even Nidar in his own way was a talent. Mm. That is a talent. It's in the blood. Mm. But I honestly believe and I don't know the politics of it. Brett had reached a pinnacle. He was a great and still performer. But I think Owen would have turned out a better wrestler if he had been given the chance. Mm -hmm. Instead of him, for some unknown reason, a good looking kid in his prime and he stuck a mask on him. I just don't get it. Mm -hmm. And somebody may tell me one yeah. day, mm -hmm. but who was the better? Mm -hmm. What I saw was Brett, but the long term, I think Owen would have been better and it still hurts me today, mm. the tragedy that we lost a great wrestler. Mm. Two more names. Mark Rocco or Fit Finlay? I can't split them. That, that, and I'll tell you why. Mm. Rocco and I were at the same time and I think you must have had some great matches with somebody who came mm. and you just had that chemistry. Yes. Finley was a far better wrestler. Mm. Show wrestler. Finley was a, a very good amateur wrestler. Mm. A lot better than Mark Rocco. Mm -hmm. But Rocco at the time, he had that jack in the box style. He was erratic, he was different. Mm -hmm. And he was dangerous as well. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about the two guys you just mentioned, they could boot you. Mm -hmm. And if he had false teeth, I know they'd be landing on the front row. I got one right here. Yeah, and I know that the lace marks would be still on your back. Mm -hmm. But they took it as well. Mm -hmm. So, as a showman, I'd probably say Rocco. Mm -hmm. As the wrestler, Finley. Okay. But it's hard to choose them two. Uh, that's but two why. hell of a good, two good workers. Yeah. And I would, I would say, not about feeling safe, because I could handle Rocco. Rocco, you had to be on your guard all the time. Mm -hmm. With Finlay, you knew, you were guaranteed you're gonna have a great match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I thought that would be a tough one. A couple more. Milos Mascaras or Dos Caras? Mascaras. Only because he looked after me. Only for that reason. <laughs> and I haven't met the other guy. Okay. Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair? It's hard to say only because are we talking wrestling ability or showmanship? I would say if I pinpoint a more direct question, the time period that they were at the top mm, of the game for, for the significance the entire ball of wax, what they brought to their respective organizations, what they meant to their, mm. to both the NWA and to the WWF. Which one would you say takes the cake? I'm going to have to go with the, I'd have to say Hulk Hogan. And the only reason being Hulkamania, it took everything off. And then I look at Ric Flair as a worker and they were both promoted in the right way and God, you must have done your own work on these two mm -hmm. and all the questions you're asking me. Mm -hmm. They're very, very hard. They're hard to split in their own way. Mm -hmm. But there again, I think the gimmick, the asses on seats at the mm -hmm. time yep. was Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. The wrestling and some of the great guys he worked with, mm -hmm. it'd be Ric Flair. Exactly. So it's, it's tired. It. But I'm one of these people, if I said to you, people like Pete Roberts, Terry Rudge, or Arn Anderson, or mm. Dean Malenko, mm -hmm. or these people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people always say, what do you reckon to Christopher Benoit? It, it was a great kid, it, it was good. Mm -hmm. But it was like watching Dynamite Kid, he'd copied himself off somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
and because I've actually been there and done it myself, people give me credit, and I, I'm switching back to myself, mm -hmm. I could, and I, I'm going to be standing on a corner now, mm -hmm. whoever's in that opposite corner to me, whether they were good, bad, or whatever, mm -hmm. I try to have the best match possible with my opponent. Mm -hmm. In other words, I get a lot of um, credit off my peers in the business mm -hmm. for being a great worker. Mm -hmm. Not a good asses on seats man. Mm -hmm. That only came when I decided I'm going to match Finlay, I'm going to match Rocco, mm -hmm. and we had the chemistry mm -hmm. where we used to knock shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what the crowd at that time wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Now let's say, let's get Hulk Hogan in Finland tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And we've got a 500-seater stadium. Only 500? Only 500. Mm -hmm. But in that one town, it's only 1,500. Mm -hmm. If you filled it, you'd done your business, hadn't you? Uh, you certainly So have, who yeah. would you think would fill it more, Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan? I would say Hogan, yeah. Right. But also, you've got to determine the Hulk and Maniacs, they're getting to our age now. Oh, they are. <laughs> So, do they still remember Ric Flair? They do. So, if I was to say Seth Rollins, mm -hmm. or somebody that they're familiar with on the TV mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's horses for courses all the time, but the ones you picked out, mm -hmm. is very, very hard. And there's also people in, in the UK and around the world mm -hmm. that didn't like me. Mm -hmm. And if you mentioned their name, I'd probably say, as a wrestler, him. Mm -hmm. But as a person, the other guy. Mm -hmm. So I would tend to go for the person, mm -hmm. right, yeah. that I like myself or I can get on because there's no room for any big egos in this business. Mm -hmm. But who are you talking about? They're all money, all money. You know, your organs and this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. And if you stopped everybody on the street and said, who's the big, Andrew the Giant or Giant A Stacks, mm -hmm. it's got to be Andrew the Giant because he's the eighth wonder of the world. Notoriety. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, if you mentioned your name, mm -hmm. and I was amazed to find out that you'd been 21 times to Japan. That's right. Yeah. And I thought, nobody's ever been 21 times to Japan. Mm. Because it was an honor to go once. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it because you're here, mm. I swear to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm. If there's anybody out there in Finland or even, you see another thing, we used to get a car and we'd drive to Hull Docks in England, mm -hmm. an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. Then we'd go an eight hour journey across on the boat. Mm. And the stories on that boat when they knew who we was mm. after a few beers and people like Rasputin who had the, his seven foot tall with the long hair mm -hmm. and you had wagon drivers pulling on his hair. <laughs> and then we used to f kick off on the boat and we used to make a mess of one or two of them. Yeah. And always the first wagon off would be the guy that's either been thrown overboard mm. and that, that was going to be done a few times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And we made a mess of them. Mm -hmm. Because we defended the business. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get off the boat because the driver of that, that wagon, the number one wagon, who's no driver, who's still in his chalet bleeding to death, you know? <laughs> because a wrestler will always defend this business. Mm -hmm. There's many a wrestler that look the part mm -hmm. and the Frankie Howards, that means you're a, they're a coward, they, 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 they can't fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this is the fight business. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's also the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And it's the best business in the world. Not because I've been in it, mm -hmm. but it's given me the golden opportunity to travel the world. Mm -hmm. Where are we going from here? Whoever's doing the product, they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. I just wish, as in football, if there's somebody that's been 21 times to Japan, if there is somebody that's got a creditable background, I wish there was a pot of money that they could invest, mm. let's say, to slam wrestling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to get one finished wrestler, boy or girl, mm -hmm. to get a tryout. Mm -hmm because we tend to be doing it mm. then giving us our, giving them our talent yeah yeah 
and then where's that person gone once you've made it mm. they don't want to know you anymore well no that's it yeah. you know what I mean? mm. it's a cutthroat business like a lot of business are mm. but all i can say is and i'll finish on this note if it's okay with you mm. i've never been to finland before mm -hmm. I've never been to Norway. I class that the other part of Europe mm. that they're probably into cycling, they're probably mm. into skiing, yeah. they're not into the wrestling. And they have wrestling there. But what I'm saying is because the WWE, let's say, have been going into their living rooms, mm. television, there might be a market, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to expand the business. And these people that are trying, like yourself, mm. you know, if any other promoters are in this business, in in Finland and Norway, I'm not being embarrassing to you. I don't know you. Mm -hmm. I ser seriously, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me to come to Finland and do what I'm doing, mm -hmm. the answer is yes, I'll go. But I ain't just coming here for an holiday. I want to do what I know best, put something back into the business. So what I want to do with that, finish on this note, slam wrestling, I've done two days you're not going to like me today because this is going to be the hardest day mm -hmm. but i just want to personally thank clam wrestling himself yeah. for having me absolutely marty it's been a pleasure thank you so much and there you have it number one marty jones we are professional wrestling and this is slam wrestling finland that's slamrest.com we'll catch you later no pain no gain <laughs>